One thing I want to get across is that the crew is safe. Um, if you weren't aware, the reason I'm talking to you about this this morning is uh, we had a launch this morning at 2.45 local time, and about 119 seconds into that flight, the launch abort system kicked in. And so everything worked fine from that perspective, but of course the fact that the launch abort system kicked in at all means that something didn't go right. We don't know for sure what that is, but it was within about a second of the first stage uh, separation happening. And that's uh, Nick Haig, he's the US crew member, the one of two crew members um, that were on that Soyuz spacecraft. That's after that, that uh, very quick flight and, and much faster than, than expected return. So he's doing fine. I'm sure he's a little frustrated. Um, the way the, that launch abort system works, um, or actually right at launch, there is the first stage lights at the same time as the second stage. So imagine down the center, that's the second stage and there's four strap-on boosters on the sides. Um, at 115 seconds into that flight, the central tower of the launch abort system gets jettisoned. So that it takes away that capability, but it's a really robust system. And the shroud that protects the crew inside the descent module and the habitation compartment that's gonna eventually take them into space um, actually has thrusters on it. And at 118 seconds, like I mentioned already, the first stage separation happened. And then somewhere around 119 seconds, that uh, those thrusters on the uh, shroud took the crew safely away from whatever the uh, problem was. Again, we don't know that yet. And uh, then for the crew, they really don't have to do much other than be aware. In fact, the, probably for them, the first time they realized there was a problem was when the, the light went on, telling them that the, the system to separate them just kicked in. Um, it should have been about four to five Gs for them. I, I've seen some reports that it might have been up to seven. Again, I don't really know what's correct. And then finally, uh, the crew did have to do ballistic descent. That's probably the biggest thing they had to do is press the button that said ballistic descent, and that just gives them kind of the old school default version. Doesn't require a lot of fancy stuff to get them back to the ground safely under a parachute like they normally would. And that's all I got. Thank you. Wayne, please join me on stage. What we have as you heard yesterday, flight director of 41 missions. He's one person that has been through what's going on right now at headquarters. So I thought you'd get a little update. So just, you know, first of all, I don't have any direct information. So thanks, uh, thanks uh, Mark, for bringing us that. Um, but I can tell you the context. Of course, it always pays to plan for the worst case situation. And you know NASA, and and the flight control team have already put plans together. They have a contingency action plan, um, and they always are aware that these kind of things could take place. So the good news is the crew's safe. The Russians, the recovery forces have picked them up and already taken them back, and, and, they're, and they're doing well. Um, the next step is the Russians have set up a, an investigation uh, uh, board. They call it a commission and they'll be looking into the cause of the failure, what caused it, and how to correct any problems. And of course, it's too early for e us to even speculate on what might have happened during that booster uh, failure. Um, the Soyuz launch vehicle has been very reliable. I think uh, Soyuz, in terms of manned spaceflight, has flown over 100 missions in 35 years since the last failure they had in 1983. Um, that crew had a a, a higher altitude abort uh, back in 1983. Think about that. That's 35 years, if I did my math correctly. So uh, it's been very reliable. There have been some failures of the launch vehicle in other varieties than the one that are used for human beings. There's a progress failure a couple of years ago. So everybody will be looking back over those kinds of things to see if there's any similarities, and hopefully they will get back to flying again. The scramble right now. And, and I don't, scramble may not be the right word, but there's a replanning effort obviously going on board uh, for the 
crew that's on board right now in mission control. There were a number of tasks that were going to be done. I think there was an EVA for some battery replacements that Nick Haig was going to participate in. And so all those things are being replanned right now as we speak. And hopefully they will return the Soyuz to flight um, long before we have to talk about bringing the crew that's up there back down. And that, to me, is the key thing. We want to keep that continuous presence in space we've had since 1999. So anything else uh, I can help you with, just ca color me out here in the hall and we can talk. And uh, OK, thank you. So today, you will hear from Vin Fang, who's doing the commercial resupply program, program manager for commercial resupply, SpaceX, and Orbital K, uh, Northrop Grumman Innovative Systems will be on that panel. And then we have commercial crew, and Kathy Leaders will be speaking today. And I've already checked in with her today, so you'll be hearing from them later this afternoon. And they will give you as much information as they can when they're on stage later this afternoon. Ven wrote me just a little bit ago, and he will be here around noon, so anybody who would, you know, just be respectful, he's going to tell you what he's going to tell you on stage, so, but he will be here in case anybody uh, does want to talk to him. And uh, so we're going to get on with the program at this stage. I want to thank uh, everybody who helped us have a wonderful evening last night. My two colleagues, uh, the Space Grant Program Manager, Joletta Patrick and Erica Alston, got in really late, and they tried it. They were like a whole day delayed for trying to get out here. So I'm very glad I have those folks here with us this morning, and thank you all for having such a interesting time getting here, but now you're here, and we're very happy to have you here. And I'm very grateful for all the support we had last night for all of our hospitality events. And I want to thank all of our sponsors, including Joe Bullington and Mike Whitmore. Joe Bullington is the comedian in the crowd. But, and um, Hotel Encanto did a great job. Wayne, thank you again for stewarding us. I keep looking at everybody, just, you know, wherever you are, Mark, wherever you went, um, but they probably went to get breakfast now. Thank you very much for stewarding us. We had a great day yesterday. ISPCS staff, as usual, you're the best, and thank you for going above and beyond all year long to provide us this wonderful show and New Mexico Embrace that we provide for everybody in our audience. I'm glad to welcome back uh, six times or so our Mayor Miyagashima here. For those of you who have experienced ISPCS for the first time, now you understand a little bit more about building community that we do here for two days. We give you lots to talk about through the... You're not helping. <laughs> <laughs> I have to quit that, you know, we're videotaping here. Um, we give you a lot to talk about through the agenda so that the networking here is very rich. And this community we build is, from the inside out in New Mexico, we are about building community. Ken has supported this show since the first second he was the mayor. Well, I was probably in his office after everybody else who was congratulating him. But anyway, we've known each other a long time. And Mr. Mayor, um, would you please tell our audience about the city's support for the new space festival and about um, the full-scale model of Spaceship Two in front of City Hall? It's been very interesting to hear the comments. Is that really the size? Well, that's what full-scale model means. And anything else you would like to tell our audience? Sure, sure. Thank you and okay, welcome well, back. Thank you, Pat. Well, good morning, everybody. I have to remember that I brought this one to, uh, I think, SpaceX. This is probably the coolest but water bottle. Uh, and I can talk and, and not have to worry about holding a mic. So anyways, well, good morning. And thank you very much for allowing me to say a couple words. Thanks, Pat, for putting on such a great conference. I was looking over the agenda. 
So how many of you um, actually do the morning run? Okay, a few, yeah, that's pretty good. I've, I don't think I've ever seen that, or I don't know, is that something new? No, no. Oh, okay, well maybe, I guess I hadn't seen the different agendas in past years past, so anyways. Uh, as, as Pat was mentioning, we are starting the Space Festival. It's something here that uh, we're looking forward to. It's gonna be really exciting. A lot of people express a lot of interest in it. We have a, a great person by the name of Phil Sanfilippo. He heads up our economic development department, and uh, he's just a fantastic uh, organizer. And it's amazing that, let me put this stuff down. It's amazing the uh, interest that we're getting, and, and uh, we're looking really forward to it. It's gonna be really fun. We appreciate, of course, uh, Virgin Galactic uh, for loaning us Spaceship Two. Yes, it has been there at City Hall. I, I wish we'd kind of moved it over just a, a hair because uh, that's, it's, it's in the front entrance of City Hall, so people have to go through the library to get to the City Hall. So it's, it's slowed down a little bit of foot traffic inside, which, um, you know, a little bit of, they're a little bit frustrated, but nonetheless, it's pretty cool. We have 24-hour security watching it. it, brings a lot of interest. We're kind of wondering where we're going to put it because if we do, we have to be very careful because wherever we put it, uh, people are going to stop and, and you know, we don't want to cause any accidents because there's a, just a lot of interest in it. So we're very fortunate for that. But I just want to say that um, you know, it, it, this, is, this is really amazing. The other day I was at a stop sign and I saw an uh, out of town uh, license plate from Alaska. It said the last frontier. And I, I, I think space is the last frontier. And for all the, the everyone in this room, for all that you do to help us uh, understand uh, this great uh, universe of ours is really incredible. And uh, the other day, my, my son, he's a junior at New Mexico State. He's studying to be a double E. And um, I, I really believe a Navy uh, recruiter is talking to him. And, and he says, no, no, Dad, really, I don't have to go to the Navy. I, or I don't have to join the military. I said, you know what, I have a feeling this is a Navy recruiter. So I asked to meet with them, and uh, no, uh, they didn't want to meet just yet. So, but what I'm trying to say is, it's really ignited him. He's really excited about it, and so obviously it's, it's something there that uh, you're starting to see a lot of the younger generation, I believe, really are interested in, in space. And so this is just uh, hats off to Pat for always doing this. You do such a fantastic job and, and, and allowing to get the word out so that so many people can get a chance to see all the neat things that are happening here. We're so fortunate, as I mentioned, uh, with Virgin and uh, Space, SpaceX and all that they do, and we're looking really forward to them. We're, we're here to support them 110%. I'm glad the, uh, the road is f completed now. Yes, Pat, to the South End Road? Okay, good. Uh, that's something there that was a long time coming. If you guys haven't had a chance to go out there, we're really happy to hear about that. Um, really excited about it. One of the things that I do with I have a program that I do with third graders. I, I probably meet with every elementary school in the city. There's 25 of them. And one of the things I t tell them about is to study their science and their uh, math. Their, you know, they're not engineers, but, and I show them pictures. In fact, um, I need to get a few more from Virgin Galactic, but I, uh, they're, they're really in awe when they see things like this. And for you all to, to uh, be at the forefront uh, is really an exciting uh, opportunity I'm glad to hear our uh, astronauts were not hurt, but that's, uh, that's, that's, that's why they're heroes. They, they take those risks. They do this to help better our, uh, our world, our communities, our nations, um, and to explore that last frontier. So again, thank you for coming to Las Cruces. Uh, how many of you, is this the first time that you've been here? Okay, a good chunk. Okay, so good. Well, hopefully you enjoy. Uh, today, I was, um, right before I got here, I was you know, grabbing a, uh, some breakfast. I was telling my wife, you know, sometimes we feel guilty with our weather that we have here. It's, it's beautiful. And then you see our, our neighbors there in, uh, in uh, the East Coast, and they're just being battered. And, you know, we're, we're, we're understanding that it's supposed to be a little bit of rain tomorrow because of another, uh, um, I don't know what it's called, but nonetheless, uh, thanks for being here today. And, uh, enjoy the rest of the conference. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much, and good luck to your son. Okay, thank you. If you ever wants to talk about space, six four six six four one four. Well, you know, I had to cross out a whole bunch of stuff of what I was going to talk about this morning, so 
we'll go to the bottom line. And um, today's the day that we focus on how many of you in the room have created capability for companies and their cargo to take advantage of the transportation capability NASA and others, commercial providers, have created for our, our space programs, our space technologies, and, our in, and a shout out to all of you, including our colleague from JAXA and four colleagues from the United Kingdom. Having international partners joining us, and Alain Dupont, wherever he went, and from France, we're very fortunate to have our international partners. A great statement was made yesterday that space programs are harder to cancel when there are more international participants. Those are things we want to keep in mind. We look forward to having many more of our colleagues here at ISPCS. It's my pleasure now to introduce our master moderator for day two. And Wayne is in the room, and we do want to give him a little bit of a thank you very much. And Belinda, his wife, is here. She just wanted to make sure that he really was working as hard as he said he was working, which is true. Great pleasure to welcome you back, Ariane. Ariane is head of astronaut sales and also head of North American sales for the New Glenn. And the mayor is now leaving, but Blue Origin is another really close neighbor. And we're very happy that you're having wonderful successes. Congratulations on the announcement yesterday with the Air Force contract. About eight years ago, Clay Morey, who uh, was my title sponsor for ISPCS 1 and more, uh, he's now with Blue Origin. He said he wanted to bring an extraordinary woman to ISPCS. And you know that he has a conference that the main reason for his conference is to support young professionals to come to meetings like ISPCS. He said, I'd, I'd like to invite Ariane Cornell, who's the executive director for the Space Generation Advisory Council. They're working with the United Nations program on space applications. And in 2012, Ariane began her MBA program at Harvard Business School. And her professor, Matt Weinzerl, is in the room today. And he'll be speaking. And he asked uh, Ariane, and I think I'll let you tell a little bit more about the story of uh, you and Matt and how Matt got engaged with you. But fortunately, the word gets out. We have many of our partners are talking to each other about what happens here at ISPCS. Lucky for me and for Mark, he's one of our speakers today. And he'll be discussing the program at Harvard Business School that is focused on commercial space, Andy Aldrin. George Sowers, Joletta Patrick, and one more who I'm spacing out at the moment will also be talking about their commercial space programs at universities. I can't see. Who are we pointing to? Oh, Dan. Yikes. Oh, my God. We're going to have to delete this video of me. That's it. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> so you're not going to, you ain't going to see Paulie no more. Does anybody remember, now that I can relax, does anybody remember The Godfather when uh, Paulie got it in the, uh, uh, at the, near the toll booth and uh, uh, the guy who shot him went back and the, uh, Sonny said, did you take care of Pauly? Yeah, you ain't going to see Pauly no more. <laughs> Don't forget the cannolis, that whole thing. You remember that? Okie dokie. Just checking. Want to make sure everybody's there. Right. All right. So Blue Origin has been very busy this year with the three launches from Van Horn. And one of our speakers, Brian Barnett, flew on two of those flights. And he's going to be talking to you about the first Wi-Fi, commercial Wi-Fi in space. Congratulations on prior to this announcement, uh, with uh, ULA being selected uh, to do their first stage with BE4. And the moon race that you guys are talking about. So it's nice 
that you have a focus. And ISPCS is a focused agenda, and I'll get back to that later. I'm going to do that at the end since we're a little off on timing. So this is under the heading of you never know who you're going to meet at ISPCS. So please join me on stage. That took a little longer than I thought. But. <laughs> Thanks, Pat. Thank you. All right, good morning, everybody. Thank you again, Pat, for, uh, for inviting me and, and Blue Origin back to, uh, to moderate. It's always fun to come down to, uh, to New Mexico. It actually, I don't know about you, but it blows my mind that it's been a full year since, uh, since our last ISPCS. And um, I think the, the tipping point is, a, is an interesting theme for this year's, uh, this year's conference. I, I almost wonder if we're actually over the edge, just considering, uh, of the tipping point, considering how much has been happening Certainly, in the last uh, couple of weeks, I, I, uh, I struggle to keep up myself. I'm not sure how our friend Mr. Faust uh, manages to do it. Um, I think uh, we need to get this man. Yeah, there you go. I was going to say, get this man some coffee uh, and some toothpicks for those eyeballs. Thank you so much for everything that you do to keep us, uh, keep us in the loop.